Salutations respected viewers, this is George from Ireland. Here I am on Waterloo Place in London. Behind me is the statue of Florence Nightingale. So why is she honoured with this statue at this location? Well, um, she is known as the mother of modern nursing and she saved countless soldiers' lives. So what's her story? Well, she's born in, 1920, sorry, in 1820 in Italy, in the city from which she derives her Christian name. She came from a very wealthy family. And uh, because of the Napoleonic Wars, the continent was closed to Britishers uh, for over 20 years because they would have been interned by France or her allies. The Napoleonic Wars ended in 1815, and so her parents decided to go on holiday for five years. Uh, they traveled through France and Italy mainly. Um, Florence was lucky she wasn't born in Naples where her sister was born, and her sister was therefore named Parthenope, which is the um, original Greek name for, for, for Naples, meaning virgin-faced. Uh, anyway, they returned to the United Kingdom, and um, she grew up in Hampshire, where her father was an extensive um, landowner, uh, and she did very well in her schooling. And for a young lady of her class, was expected to marry in her late teens, uh, and that was that, and not to be too bookish, she was very erudite, but she was also very caring about people suffering, and indeed the suffering of animals. Um, she wanted to be a nurse. Medicine was closed to women until the 1860s, and her parents really didn't approve. They thought this was for working class women. It's far too hands-on. It was dangerous. They, um, she might contract a contagious disease. Um, they thought it was unhygienic, and all the rest of it was beneath her station. Um, and nurses were not very respected, and they were abysmally paid at the time. But she did find out about some German um, Protestant women who, who engaged in nursing as a profession. Some Catholic nuns did it, but she was brought up in the Church of England. And converting to Rome was anathema then. Anyway, she, she went to Germany and she was a, with a group of German Protestant nurses, uh, and her parents found that just about acceptable. She chose not to wed. Um, uh, there was no formal training or education for nurses in those days. Then the Crimean War broke out in 1853, so uh, the British. French and the Ottoman Empire were fighting against the Russians over the Crimean Peninsula, over the Russians erecting bases uh, along the shore there, and that was supposedly in breach of the Treaty of Unkia Skelesi. Anyhow, eventually the Piedmontese came on, on the Allied side. But cut a long story short, the uh, British Army was very disorganized, the commissariat and the medical department were grossly inadequate, and many soldiers were dying needlessly of their wounds um, and, and diseases. And uh, the British Army had to put a stop to this, not just for humanitarian reasons, but it was simply a waste of manpower. And uh, there was an outcry. They were often treated at this uh, hospital in Istanbul, Skutari. Um, it's not called Skutari in, in Turkish now. Um, anyway, so uh, Florence Nightingale said something has to be done about this. There's not enough bandages, medicine, anything, doctors, nurses. So she went to uh, 10 Downing Street, spoke to the Prime Minister, and she wanted to improve the situation. Why on earth would uh, the politicians listen to this single woman? Well, she said, we need to set up a new military hospital and I'll pay for it. Because uh, in modern terms, she was a multi, multi millionaire And that's what got their attention. She was gonna foot the bill. So she went over there and not only did she pay for it, she did a lot of hands-on nursing. She actually treated soldiers herself known as the Lady of the Lamp, doing her rounds at all hours, and certainly very caring. And she realised hygiene was as important as anything else. People didn't take this seriously, and doctors often didn't wash their hands in between patients. But anyway, she got the death rate down dramatically. Um, the British Army learnt its lesson and did improve its uh, commissariat and its medical service, uh, remarkably after this. And she said nursing has got to be an ultra-respectable profession in the way nurses dress, behave, are hygienic, or seem to be morally upstanding, because army nurses were not considered at all respectable the way any woman camp follower would be a nurse, and often she would be providing other services to the soldiers, which some would consider less than moral, um, on behalf of the soldiers as well as the nurses. Uh, so that, that was that. Um, anyway, she lived on until 1910, and uh, when she passed away, she was mourned by many thousands. So she lived to the age of 90. Notably, she was um, utterly opposed to women's suffrage. They thought women must not be granted the right to vote. So she believed in gender roles. Uh, you can see she's got a very Victorian hairstyle there. Another point about it is she never wed. In those days, they felt a woman could not pursue a profession if she was married. Um, so uh, women were not able to 
uh, into most professions until the 1920s. And uh, certainly a mid middle class woman who married was usually expected to give up a job. Upper class woman probably never had a job apart from being mother and wife. And working class women, if they're married and had several children, they often had to work simply for financial reasons. So that is Florence Nightingale.